All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Go From A Network. And today we're actually doing a sponsored review video on just some tools that you can actually use in the garden. If you're really starting to get into the garden, one thing you're gonna notice is grass, weeds. You always gotta compete with the grass in everything you do. Having some of these battery powered devices will actually make it a little bit easier for you than a lot of your gas powered things. One thing if you forget about uh, to charge your battery, you can just plug it in. If you forget gas and a gas powered weed eater or a gas powered blower, or you don't have that four cycle mixed engine oil, you gotta mix the gas and the oil, you gotta remember all those ratios, you can avoid all of that and you gotta drive to the store to get the stuff. When all you gotta do is just put your little battery on the charger for about 30, 40 minutes in the morning, then you're ready to go. Then battery powered equipment is just what you've been looking for. It took me years to give in, but when I tried my first battery powered weed eater, I was sold because the battery powered tools from five years ago, if you thought and you used to buy those little plug in weed eaters, you can just forget it. It's totally different now. It, it's really just about just as powerful, if not just the same as having a gas powered with all of your battery powered stuff because these batteries hold so much power. This is a Badger. And what you're gonna get in here while Badger power, you're gonna get a 40 volt, you're gonna get a battery charger and a battery. You're gonna get a string, they call it string trimmers. Where I'm from down in Louisiana, we call them weed eaters. So you're gonna get a weed eater and a blower. It's all gonna come in this one box. The description is gonna be below. You can really go and check it out, get in depth with it. If you have a weed eater, you're probably gonna be like, okay, I know everything. But if it's your first time and you're thinking about getting a weed eater, maybe you're not really versed in and getting out into your yard and doing some work, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna show you just about every part of this, what it does right here in the house. And then I'll go outside and we'll do some, I guess some practice for you. Well, not practice for me, but I'll show you how it actually works. The only thing you're gonna need is a screwdriver. That's it. And basically if you come right here, you'll see, you're gonna put this on and it's only four screws and you're gonna see where they go. The four screws are gonna just you put this on here, slide it on, and then you use the four screws to actually, uh, like right here, this one isn't done all the way. And the four screws are just to make sure it's tied down. All right, and you wanna get that nice and tight. Basically, just like that. Look at that another one. I didn't tie them all the way. Nice and tight. So that's all you're gonna need. Four screws. Next thing is this. I was looking at the, <laughs> you're gonna get your handle. I was actually looking at this and this handle is gonna go on this way. Slide that on. And I'm gonna slide this part on. Let me get this out of my hand. Maybe it goes that way. Huh. Maybe it goes on the top. <laughs> Dear Mr. King, please read the instructions. But the instructions didn't really say exactly how to put this part on, but you put that little iron part on, then you match it up, clamp it over, take your screw, gotta line it up. All right. And basically you're screwing it back on. And then you're gonna find where where it feels comfortable for you. If you're shorter, maybe you got, you gotta get it a little bit um, back here, if you're a little taller, maybe you want it a little elongated. I'm going to just put it like midway. And basically, if you look, you're screwing into this little screw that's here. So don't let this screw fall out. All right. 
I'm gonna tighten that down. Oh, and I gotta make sure it's straight. Make sure it's straight with your body. So I wanna look at it, make sure it's straight, and then I wanna finish tightening it down. And then of course, here is just the lock where you lock it on. Battery is still out right now. I'm gonna look at this. So I think the uh, arrow goes in. Let's see, maybe. Oh, arrow with arrow, sorry, hold on. Arrow and arrow. <laughs> there it goes. So you can see those two arrows. That's a down arrow. Right here is an up arrow. I would have thought it would have been with that little opening, but arrow to arrow. And then once you get that in, this is basically just screws it down to lock it in place. That would be easy for that. So that's easy. Of course no battery in so it's one battery for both look at this battery i actually charged this battery like two days ago so i'm gonna put this on i'm gonna show you this i'm just gonna put it on to just make sure it works i think it's scary yeah so it works i'm gonna take that battery back out and we're gonna go over just the features of the trimmer. I did read the instructions. Don't think I didn't read. You look, there's a lot of safety information. You're gonna check out all your safety information. There's uh, talking about how to charge it, when to charge it, when it's too cold to charge it, and when it's too uh, hot to charge it. I did like that through some of the uh, instructions. But on this one, we're gonna talk about on and off trigger. It shows the number one, that's gonna be here. Can't I mean, just can Oh, there's no no battery on it, so it's not gonna come on. All right, so it's not coming on, people. So we're gonna start here. It says on and off triggers are number one. That's this. And of course, this is a safety mechanism right here. So you're gonna have to press that safety mechanism in order for this to even go all the way up. If not, it's not gonna go up until you press that safety. So when you turn it on, basically you put your thumb here and you use your bottom fingers to pull up on it. All right, so number one is the on and off trigger. Number two is the rear handle. So number two is this here, call it the rear handle. Number three is your starter button. Whoa, number three must be this button here. So it just tells you, you got to have that button pressed before you can actually hit the trigger on and off. Um, four is your handle. Five is your upper shaft. That's this. Six is your shaft coupling. That's this, that, that you tighten it and take it on and off. Um, seven is your lower shaft, which is this. Eight is your trimmer guard. This is what they're talking about. When they say trimmer guard, that's what uh, guards you from getting um, hit in the eye with things that are flying out of there. Um, nine is an adjustable cutting diameter. So right here, you can adjust this and this will cut your, if you adjust this down, whenever your string hits that, it'll cut it off. And that way you only get that base. If you want it to come a little shorter, you adjust it and then your string will hit that little blade there which is it's well i'll take that off now so now it's open where well, your string could hit that blade and cut off right this there too, um, sharp. yeah it's a little sharpener number 11 is your edger button so we do have a button on here to turn this from a string trimmer into an edger so when you're edging well when you're using your weed or trimming you're cutting like this but if you want to edge, you got to turn it on its side. But you got to press this button first because it has to make this trimmer actually spin into into uh, that mode. 
so that way it can roll on that wheel, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't want to have it like this when you're edging. It has to turn that way so you can edge with the weed eater or if you press that button and you just want to do some weed eating or spring trimming, you can trim it like that. So the wheel, of course, is number 12. And number 13, number 13 is your battery interlock. So it just shows you how this battery locks in. Basically, you bring it in. And there's a little button on the back to take the battery off. You pull it down. But make sure when you put the battery on, make sure it locks into place. You hear that noise. All right, so that one's ready. This one is done and it's ready to go. We'll put it on the side. Remember, this is the power to it. Don't, one thing I like about battery powered string trimmers, weed eaters and edgers is that if I started this, I would have to pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it to get it started. All kind of other parts involved. And then when I want to stop to do something, just say if I'm weed eating and I just want to move something, I got to put this on the ground and it's steady losing uh, gas. It's steady eating into your cost. With these, once you take your hand off the trigger, that's it. You stop using battery. It just stops. Um, I'm going to take out this blower. Now, we, we've had a an electric blower for some time. We don't have gas blowers here, but we do have an electric blower. But I can tell you, it only goes as far as your extension card, <laughs> and that's it. With a battery powered blower, you get to, you know, you get to go all out in your yard, wherever you want to go, all the way down your driveway. We have a kind of long driveway here. And this is just, a, this is an easy one. From what I read, this is an easy one. Basically, you see this little channel that's here. You take this, you put that in that channel. It's going to be on both sides. Slide it into that channel. And then when you turn it, it's locked. Same thing. You take your battery. Let's see which way it goes. Right in there. Same battery for both um, for both pieces of equipment. Snap it in, and you got a blower. Oh, I can show y'all. I was about to say I don't have no grass up in here to blow, but. I can... So. <laughs> yeah, it really works. Now I just blew all my my papers all over the place. This one here, it comes with a blower body blower tube and a warranty the warranty is going to be in here and you actually can look at the serial number they said the serial number on this product is located beneath the blower body so that means yeah down here you have your serial number i'm sure it's probably the same on the string trimmer you got your serial number there as well you got your handle number one that's your handle. Number two, you got a turbo boost button. So I didn't hit that one, but I just turned it on. But you do have a turbo button on here, number two. If you got it and you need a little bit more power, you press that turbo button. That's number two. Number three is your battery powered interlock, which is right here at the back. Basically, you get that battery on there. Make sure, yep. Yeah, pull it in and out. Number four is a jet fan. That's gonna be all housed in here. Number five is your tube latch. That's what you latch your tube on. Number six is your blower tube. Number seven is the tube outlet. That's just the end. And number eight is your on and off switch. Which is that one. Which is just, yeah. So this one here, because it's not dangerous, for most kids, if you got little kids, you don't just want something like a string trimmer that they can go up to or a lawnmower that they just gotta press one button and it comes on. You want that safety on it. But this blower, you really don't need a safety on it because kids, 
I've never seen a kid get hurt or killed or maimed from a blower. The most my kids do is they'll like put this up in their face or blow it up in somebody's face, but that's nothing that's going to kill them per se. Now, I wouldn't tell you blow this in your face if you have any kind of respiratory problems or anything. I'm not saying that. What we're going to do is we're going to go outside. It's a little hot now. A little later, we're going to go outside. All right, so coming out here, we want to give this... I know the blower is going to work. I mean, the blower is just like any other blower. I've been kind of using this one a little bit. I just started probably about a minute or two. And what I'm seeing on this one is the bracing. My other ones don't have this bracing on it. So when you're using it, or this protection, I guess you would call it, the little shield. My other one does kind of has it at the back, but this one has it on the side. So I gotta, you gotta kind of more so cut using this side. So when you're cutting, let's put my glasses on. When you're cutting, you gotta kind of angle it a little bit. If you cut like this, then you can't really cut, right? It's in the way. So you gotta get it so close to the ground. But you gotta kind of turn it a little bit to the side. And what I like to do is, you can see how once you once you actually stop it, you and you gotta put this down to move something. You're not just constantly eating up gas, like the gas is just sitting there going off. When you take your hands off of it, for the most part, it stops. Now, I'm trying to get this to, to cut. It looks far enough, um, but when it stops, it does make, it does make that sound when it's slowing down. So that's what that noise is that you hear. It's just how it is on the motor. So what I like to do is I like to weed eat and I got my I got my battery power push more. So through here, it's a little too small for me to bring the, the rod lawn more. So I actually have to push and I just use like you just saw, I use weed eater just to get right around those garden beds. <laughs> I got to set it down because I don't want this growing out of this bed. So I want to push them back inside. This is what I don't want this year at least. Now I can't get in behind that. If you maybe had a a tree, so you want to cut around, and you don't want you don't want to make sure your blade doesn't hit it or the string doesn't hit it, then you will use this to kind of come up against it, um, kind of like this. Let's try it. Out.
not a I'm not a huge safety guy, so I'm not a big fan of of having the shield and the guard kind of stopping me. I'm one of those like to take a little chance, so I like to get a little closer, but I wouldn't advise you take that off because that's the safety mechanism of the badger. Um, and then, like I said, if you wanted to, and I'll show you right over here, if you had concrete, you would take this and just say this is the edge of your concrete. You, you are basically, you can get right here, Bell. That way you can get a straight on shot. Basically, if this was your concrete, you'll come on side of it. Concrete, you get the idea of how clean that the edge or cut would work, and you can do the same thing. I would do the same thing on both sides. So, if the concrete was running this way, and you come right here. <laughs> And basically that's how you trim up your concrete and everything else you would turn it and you can just do that I guess I can, I, if I had the blower out here, you basically would get the blower and just blow everything. Blower cool. Now, if this was your concrete, basically. I want to try that turbo mode. You can hear it. When you press the button, when you press the button, you can hear it. And it, it's just a, a little trigger. It doesn't hold, but you just press it with your thumb, so. Cool thing about that, if you're using this for a garden and you may have leaves or during the fall we have a good bit of leaves, but even if you want to kind of clean up the area that you just weed eat it, you still could come with your blower. Kind of clean it up around the plant. I've actually seen some people doing that, especially if you got like bugs and stuff on your, now this is a little outside the box for the badger, but if you got like bugs, those leaf footed limbs on your plant, you can also knock some of those bugs off your plants as well.
about this will be in the description below. Click on that link and, and go check it out. Oh, lastly, then you got a little battery light and it shows you the battery life. When you press that power button, it shows you how much battery you got left. So I only use like one little square. I've got three left. So I got 75% battery left. So that's gonna be, I'll be able to do a whole lot of work without stopping to actually recharge. That's one thing, that's a good trade off I think with battery powered tools. With a gas powered tool, you just putting gas and you working, you working, you working, especially in the heat of the summer. I think it's a good thing to have a battery that needs to be recharged because guess what? When this battery goes dead, I'm taking a break. You can't do anything. With the gas one, you just put more gas and you keep working yourself, keep working yourself, and you end up with heat stroke. With this, when the battery goes dead, you guarantee 30 minutes rest while it's charging back up. So that's for you guys that women are always talking about you lazy. Say, hey baby, I need 30 minutes for that battery to charge. If it was me, I I'd be out there. Battery got to charge, that's a good thing. Thank y'all for watching the Girlfriend Network. And as always, grow, grow, grow.